Hey legends and welcome back to the sim racing channel where we're putting away the racing boots and switching back to our serious narrative style. Today cemented some of the worst news the mainstream racing game sphere has ever seen. EA, numerous times voted worst company in the United States, has just cemented their bid to buy UK racing game publishing giant Codemasters. The news cycle for the last several days has been dominated by the news that Take-Two Interactive Publishers of the popular franchises such as Grand Theft Auto and Red Dead Redemption had put in a $1 billion bid to purchase Codemasters. The general sentiment in the sim racing scene was not favourable. Codemasters is the last of the major independent publishers still straddling ground with the actual sim racing scene. It has the financial weight to take on properties such as Formula One and Rally, but with the talent to execute something more than a low-riding, pure arcade game with them. The notion of Codemasters being absorbed by major publishers such as Take-Two was generally seen as a sign that the direction of their future titles would likely be diluted substantially for an even larger mainstream audience, leaning ever more heavily on popular DLC and microtransaction models to maintain profitability, something Codemasters have already dabbled quite heavily in with Dirt Rally 2. Well. Just as you thought the situation couldn't possibly get any worse, EA comes along at a stroke to midnight with a snipe bid to secure the contract at a whopping 1.2 billion US dollars. While this deal is certain to make key people very rich, it stands to make the racing game scene far more bereft of quality titles straddling both the simulation and arcade realms. For anybody who doesn't immediately understand why an EA takeover is a horrible thing, we need to take a quick trip down history lane and recount some of EA's accomplishments. While a comprehensive list of all the reprehensible things EA has done as a company would be well beyond the scope of this video, we'll focus on a few choice items from recent history to give you the narrative. EA first became notorious during its growth spurt during the early 2000s for buying up arrays of developer studios primarily for their IP rather than the talent working at said studios. It developed a habit of then forcing those studios to drastically change the artistic direction of those IPs in order to appeal to different audiences. This led to a string of failures and later closures of video game developers throughout the industry all at the behest of EA. They became known as the Evil Empire, the Grim Reaper of gaming, essentially cementing that if your favourite developer got purchased by them, you could rest assured that their future output would no longer resemble what you had once loved and would likely be followed by the studio's closure shortly thereafter, as they failed to showcase adequate profitability for EA. EA was at the forefront of the famous video game industry crunch, notably dehumanizing its employees with abhorrent demands on their work hours, with many so-called EA spouses coming out of the woodwork, detailing the horrific demands the publishing giant was making of their significant others, utterly debilitating their lives. Alongside Activision and Bethesda, EA led the way for the proliferation of the loot box mechanic, having shifted into a gear where hyper-profitability was king over all else, EA introduced the dreaded card packs into its major sporting properties, turning over windfall profits. In fact, in 2019, microtransactions accounted for over $2.8 billion in profits for EA. This notoriety hit its pinnacle during the Star Wars Battlefront 2 saga, where EA injected pay-to-win elements into the extremely grindy game. After massive uproar from the gaming community, EA issued its now famous statement on Reddit beginning with, The intent is to provide players with a sense of pride and accomplishment for unlocking different heroes. The phrase, pride and accomplishment, promptly went on to become a massive meme in the gaming industry, and the press statement itself promptly became the most downvoted comment in Reddit's history by gargantuan margin. While we could spend hours dissecting all the ways in which EA has acted reprehensibly as a company, justly earning its multiple worst company in the US accolades, we can rest there in knowing that an EA takeover does not bode well for the integrity of any studio. With EA purchasing Codemasters, this splits the entirety of the major racing game properties between three studios. Sony with Gran Turismo, Microsoft with Forza, and EA essentially with everything else, 
from Need for Speed through to Formula One, Dirt and Project Cars. Speaking of which, one bit of irony we can indulge in is that merely a few short months ago, Codemasters purchased sim racing developer Slightly Mad Studios. Slightly Mad originally got created from the ashes of the team that worked on Need for Speed Shift 1 and 2 for EA, looking to sever what they had referred to as a toxic relationship with their publisher. To think that through the machinations of corporate takeovers, they're going to end up with the same bosses just shy of a decade later is the kind of irony you would expect from the historic epics of old. Given Slightly Mad Studios' descent into mediocrity, they should be in a good position to tie in with the exploitative business strategies likely to be championed by their new EA bosses. While the deal has reportedly been confirmed, it's still early days and the true implications of this takeover are yet to be seen. What's almost undoubted however, going off historical trends, is that the net effect is going to be profoundly anti-consumer. Hit subscribe to stay up to date with future developments on this merger and racing news as a whole. Until we have more to share with you, We'll see you next time.